Hey guys, welcome back to another video on chicken fishing. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go over kind of my uh, fall musky setup. So I'm hoping to get out this weekend at some point and do a little bit of musky fishing, nothing too crazy. Um, typically, everybody likes to say what's good this time of year is big rubber and um, suckers. And I don't have any suckers right now. I, I had some a little bit ago. And obviously, I think that's kind of the best thing to use at this time. But I'm just going to go over what I got here and, um, yeah, just kind of figure it out as we do a video. So I have a new musky rod and I want to give a shout out to Average Ontario Anglers. It's a fishing podcast and Instagram page around here. I got the setup idea um, from them. So before I open this, we'll do an unboxing, but um, here's the setup. So I have a Mojo uh, St. Croix musky rod. This one, it's a little bit shorter. It's a seven foot six fast action, uh, extra heavy, extra heavy, fast action. So I think it'll be good. I mean, I don't throw like huge baits. Like I think the, the, the really long ones are better for, um, number one, I think the longer musky rods I could be wrong on this. I'm fairly new to musky fishing, but I think the, the longer ones are better for, uh, doing figure eights. Now I primarily fish out of a kayak. So doing figure eights at all is kind of tricky and I throw typically medium sized baits and I'd like to be able to use this for more than just simply throwing huge musky baits which I only even have like a handful of um so I think it would be a good you know dedicated musky rod but I might be able to get some you know throw some different bass lures and pike lures and stuff with it as well so yeah so that's the rod now just a quick little first impressions on this rod I, I cannot get over how light this thing is like it's it's just the lightest the lightest thing I've ever felt and it's just it's sturdy like it's just sturdy I think it's gonna throw baits really really nicely so I saw this setup um by the guys at AOA like I said so this is the Daiwa Pro Rex I think I'm saying that right Daiwa Pro Rex TSW 400H LP and that just means the gear ratio, honestly, I forget. I think it's uh, middle of the road is what I went with. So in terms of gear ratios for reels, um, from what I understand, basically a lower gear ratio is going to be stronger, but you're going to reel in a little bit slower. Faster gears, faster movement, but a little bit less uh, strength. That's kind of what you're giving up. So, whoo, man, this thing is beautiful. Look at that, guys. Still in the plastic. We'll take it out there. That is one pretty looking bait caster. Um, so I like the left-handed reel. Whoo, that is sweet. Now, girlfriend's out here, so I can't say exactly how much it costs because we're hundred dollars. Very expensive. Very expensive. But it's nice. It's nice. And it looks cool. And the colors match. So I'm excited to, uh, I don't have any 80 pound braid on, so I'm not going to set it up, set it up tonight, but we can at least, you know, show you it on the rod, which is looking to look pretty sweet. And I think it's the right size for it. I think it's the right size for it. So we'll get this kind of placed on here. Right, so 7.1, so 7.1, and that just means gear ratios, right? So there's five, eight, and then there's the seven. Um, and like I said, you know, those are the differences, but it, it's not gonna make like a huge, huge difference. Look at that, guys, that is pretty, that's a pretty beautiful setup there. I mean, in terms of looks, whew, very nice, so, yeah, it's just big, man. It's just big. But I think I like it better because I have another musky rod. I'm not going to get it out because it's going to be too much of a pain in the ass to move stuff. Um, and it's a lot, uh, it's a bit taller. And you definitely cannot cast that one sitting down. So I think this one I could cast it out of the chair if I wanted to. I probably won't. I'll still stand. But um, such a cool setup, dude. Such a cool setup. So I'm excited to get this one out of the water. Let's go. Um, there's the rod. There's the setup. Let's look at some of the baits that I'm going to be using. So this is going to be my number one because kind of for two reasons, and we've talked about both of them already. 
I've got everything sitting on this little pegboard. It's kind of awkward to get off. You might just use these. Um, so yeah, it kind of combines the two things I was talking about. You know, they, they say what's the best to throw right now is big rubber and suckers. So what I have here is literally a rubber sucker. So this one's kind of cool because it's, um, you know, it's not the same Medusa format that, that we see. And actually, I don't think I have any, I don't think I have any Medusas. They both got chewed up. I'm, I have a bigger one somewhere. But anyways, so this is what I want to be throwing first. I forget where I got this one, but this one's cool because it's got the, uh, it's got paddle tails on the end, which you don't typically see on baits like this. So I think that'll give it, you know, just a different kind of action, if nothing else. And I like the color of it. I mean, it looks like, you know, flash goes by. It looks like kind of a sucker color. So um, that's going to be bait number one, I think, is the big rubber sucker. Now, I also like top waters. I like to throw top waters all the time. I'm stuck in the freaking board again. Um, I like to throw top waters all the time. And I think you just can't go wrong with having one tied on because you never know when they're going to be into it. And I've always found with top waters, my personal experience is either they love them right away or they don't. So I'll, I might throw it out for five, 10 minutes and then just switch back to something else. Um, this is the Joe Boucher top raider. Uh, I really like this color, black, a little bit of orange, especially fall time. I don't know why, but just orange and black is always good. That's kind of a, my staple color for anything. If I don't know what color I want or I'm going to get, black is always a good one. Um, and for whatever reason, that little tinge of orange just seems to do better in the fall. I don't know why. Maybe it's just in my head, but in my personal experience, that's how it's been. Um, so aside from that, I've got, what else do we have here? I might throw this one around. This is just a, um, this is just like a gold bucktail. Gold, another one of those colors, for whatever reason in the fall, seems to do well for me. Um, but I like this one because it's not too big. I know everybody says to, you know, to go, go big or go home, um, especially this time of year. But I don't know, the, the places that I'm going, I'm not going after, I mean, obviously that would be nice, but I'm not really going after like 65 inch, 50 inch, 45 inch muskie. Um, it's more on the, you know, 30, maybe low 40s kind of spectrum. So I try to match the size of the bait to the size of the fish that I think I can realistically catch in that area. I mean, yeah, it would be nice, um, you know, to land a 50, but <clears throat> again, I'm just in the kayak. I'm primarily doing like rivers and um, mouths where the it opens up to lakes and that kind of thing. So, yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking for right now. I've got a couple other baits um, in the car, but that's the idea. That, that's the plan. That's the idea. And, and most importantly, I wanted to show you guys this. Because I mean, man, how cool. Whoops, I was like breaking. How cool is that setup? Daiwa Pro Rex with the St. Croix Mojo Muskie. Very cool. Very cool. So you guys let me know what you think of that in the comments. Uh, let me know what, uh, what you're fishing for. Whether it's musky, whether it's whatever, pike. Um, I did, I just caught a pike at uh, one of my spots. The spots that I'm at, or are, are, that I'm typically fishing, they're primarily uh, summer spots, but they haven't really slowed down for me at all this year. So I don't know, maybe it's a late turnover. Maybe it's a late, you know, the temperature really just changed a couple weeks ago and the water's still kind of warm. So maybe that's part of it. But uh, for around here, kind of steady as is, but um you guys let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We'll catch the next one, guys.